Hello and welcome to the Belly Boys Incredibly Online Improv Show. It's me, John McInnes. Hello, it's me, John Gallagher Potero. And it's me, Francesca Reed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have a wonderful guest today. It's Francesca. Francesca, say hello to. I mean, you're. It's what am I doing? You've already said hello. Ugh. How how's your week going, guys? Fun, good. Yeah, all right. Um, apart from Rishi Sunak telling me to like get a grip and get another kind of job, that yeah. was a bit of a low point. Although apparently yeah. he was misquoted to like whatever. Um, but I have more than ever this week. I've done shows to kids doing clowning as part of my clown charity that I have been with for eight years. The Flying Seagull Project. Check them out. Um, and I also got to do a, a live stream murder mystery, and I was Eliza Dean. It was quite mm. rouser. Ooh, that sounds wonderful. How's your week? Oh, just, don't ask us that. <laughs> I'll go first. I had an rubbish. amazing week. What are you two doing? Uh, <laughs> shit. John got an Uber this morning and would be burning him for it all day. <laughs> that's that's basically that's that's the best time I've had this week. <laughs> riding an Uber. <laughs> what, about you, what about you, McInnes? Uh, like Beat that. Be playing a lot of Rocket League right now. <laughs> like playing a lot of a video game that was released five years ago. <laughs> Fun times. It seems like you guys are relatively sane though, and I think that's an achievement post lockdown. I've been crying in a corner for the most of it. This has been a bump a week, so like don't worry. Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean <laughs> as somebody who's been crying in a corner for about two decades at this point, like you'll get used to it. <laughs> like not <laughs> Not only is the lockdown like something I've been used to because I'm kind of antisocial, like just like being this depressed is something I've been around for a while. So it's unfortunate that the whole country has came learning to this way of life. And I don't want it to be like that for long. I would like it to be resolved by the end of the year. And Gallagher, it's up to you to resolve it. You, you guys crying corners too? Yay! No, how uh, the ending of the Blair Witch Project, that is most of my life. <laughs> I'm starting what? so I'm starting so like over the top depressed for no reason whatsoever. I don't know. Why I know. We're gonna get a word. It's probably gonna be like sunshine and happiness or something. <laughs> uh, so um, basically, what we're gonna do with our lovely guest Francesca is uh, we're gonna get a word from the comment section, and then we're each gonna deliver a monologue. A monologue. And then from those three monologues, we will do some improv scenes. We don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. But we're going to have fun. Right, guys? I guarantee right. it. I guarantee okay. it will happen. There's nothing you can do to stop me having fun. I'd like to see you try. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, so the, uh, the word for today is going to be... Let's have a look at it. Uh, it's going to be cling film. Cling film. Cling film. Cling film, uh, otherwise known as saran wrap in America, uh, reminds me of how us and Americans have different ways of saying stuff. Who knew? Um, and I went out with an American uh, for a year. Um, and during that time, I realized how differently we relate to the word quite. So in America, um, I think they're still using it in quite a traditional Jane Austen kind of vibey way. Uh, and uh, they would say to me, oh, uh, he would say, you are quite beautiful tonight. And I'd be like, oh, like wounded. <laughs> because obviously in the UK, you're like, oh, it's quite nice. Or it was quite a good day. Like it feels like that's more common the usage. So I was a bit like, oh, why, why am I only a bit nice? looking today i mean guys you should always get yourself resolve uh, and happiness from within right don't rely on another but um it then came to light that in fact quite just meant very in the in the more kind of traditional novelesque way so we learn something every day Ooh. Uh, i have a lot of trouble um uh i have a lot of trouble with cling film as as a thing uh, because I could never, whenever I sort of unwrap it out from the little box, I seem to not tear it up properly. Um, and it always just ruins it. Like, basically, a good example is my mother. My mother, if she's in the kitchen, everything just looks amazing. Everything is done amazingly well. Um, and I, I specifically remember where I used to live at home in London. 
that she, the Clinton was just, it was quick. It was just boom, boom, and then it's done. I still cannot master just take the cling film out. It always goes wrong for me. It, like the half of it doesn't come out right. And then the moment I take it out of the box and try and put it over a bowl, there's always like a hole in it. <laughs> I don't know how the hole comes, <laughs> where it comes from, but uh, it's those little things that just never usually work out. And um, I guess I, I, I guess I don't realize it. Uh, one example is like my bed. So the bed that I have at home right now is actually my housemate's kid's bed. And I, I don't mean like a single bed with like a race car in it. <laughs> I mean, like, it's, <laughs> it was basically given to me because I had no furniture in my room. Uh, and my housemate gave me like his, um, his kid's double bed and his single bunk bed. It's, it's a double bed and then a single bed at the top. Uh, so I used the double bed, but it, it, looking back on it, it just makes me think like that. I, I could have very easily have just bought my own normal, like an adult bed with a. With... <laughs> I'm still sleeping in it, and I guess it's laziness. I think it's laziness. Uh, I guess I mean there's actually two kind of things that Cling Film made me think of that were kind of connected by like old high school friends. So I'm not really like. There's only a couple of people that are, I'm still friends with from high school. One story that Kling Film immediately made me think of is uh, there was a guy that I was kind of pretty close with. We were in a band at one point, and he wasn't like a, like a super dumb guy, but he did like things that were like uncharacteristically dumb in high school occasionally. <laughs> and the thing that he did that is kind of like emblazoned in my mind at one point is like, he brought, like, a big, large amount of ice cubes into school, like, uh, wrapped in cling film. And then they melted, as they would. But he was confused as to why his bag was out and where the ice cubes had went. Now, I'm describing somebody with, like, the IQ of, like, a dormouse, it sounds like. But he's not dumb. He's not a dumb dude. Just, like, uncharacteristically, he'd have, like, real moments like that where you'd have to explain, no, like, they melted. Like, are you stupid? Um... <laughs> That guy and, like, another guy, kind of part of the same friends group. This other guy, I don't know if I can even properly name who this is, but, like, this is a guy who... I got into a real argument on Facebook with him at one point. I think it was in 2010. Maybe it was before that, 2009. And we had a real argument about, like, the British Empire. He was, like, making this really <laughs> regressive argument about it being, like, a good thing for the world. And I took a contrary opinion to that. Uh, and I've always thought about that argument because it was a real. Fu it was now you have those arguments online, and then you win, and you always remember those arguments. You never forget the ones you lose, but you remember the ones you win. Uh, this guy, like, eventually became an MP, and I was, I was like, I feel like if I had the screenshots of that argument, I could get that man cancelled at this point. I mean, he's not an MP anymore for obvious. I mean, for different reasons, but. I mean, that, that that's what Kling Film makes me think of. Two somewhat unrelated things related to Kling Film. Nice. Excellent. Cool. So, from those lovely monologues, let's do some improv scenes. Hell yeah, baby. <laughs> Audience at home, clap for us. <laughs> hey, you're, uh, you're here for to see the room, right? Yeah, no, I am. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's just, um, it's this one here. Uh, it'll be, as I said in the advert, uh, 350 a month, which I think is pretty reasonable. Um, it does say, uh, Timmy, uh, on the outside door. That's the last tenant, my son. Uh, I'll just open the door. Timmy, this is, uh, the person that's going to be moving into your room. Hi. Uh, now, what obviously, uh, no, Tim, you'll be moving out. Uh, so, uh, obviously, all the furniture... It's up to you whether you want to keep the race car bed, if you want to keep the PlayStation 4. I, I'm not going to be using it, Timmy. I, I bought it. I'm your shitty stepdad. Um, so if you've got any questions, feel free to ask. There's a Starbucks pretty close by. That's where I work most of the time. Most of the time, interesting in physiology. Uh, I wanted to check. 350 a month is including all utilities, Wi-Fi, electric, gas, water, council, uh, and also dry cleaning. 
Oh, I mean, ask Timmy, of course it is. Uh, it is all-inclusive. Uh, that does include uh, every week uh, I will give you £10 of pocket money, but only if you're a good tenant. Oh, I tell you what, I'm very good at doing chores. Uh, I love a sticker chart. Uh, if there's a little smiley face when I've done well, that's brilliant. If there's a less happy face, it's more neutral if I've not done such a great job and an awful. And then if there's like an angry, rageful uh, sticker for if I've done a real bad job, I've, I've left cobwebs, I've left dust, that would really just suit me because then I know where I stand. Sorry, can I, can I just hang on a second? Dad, where am, where am I staying? Timmy, you're 16. I started working at 16, so you're moving out within the month, okay? I've already printed out a letter and given you it. The fact that you haven't opened that letter has nothing to do with me. Now, let me answer the nice man's question. Yes, we do have a sticker Thank system. Uh, we actually have in the past used a star system rather than a smiley face system because it's kind of more uh, objective, you know, in terms of number of stars. We can go up to five rather than just three facial expressions. But, you know, I'm willing to, you know, if if you if happy faces are what you want to use, then we're willing to move to a happy face system. I mean, I can live with the star as long as perhaps you do a little viral face to the star. Timmy, why can you stop crying in my bedroom, Timmy, please? Don't, don't take my PlayStation. Uh, that's my PlayStation 4. Uh, obviously, no, obviously, we'll have to clean the room because Timmy's sex and he started jacking off. This place smells like semen. I know it, you know it. I'm, I'm going to have to say it out. I'm sorry, Timmy. I know that you don't like the me embarrassing you here, but you know what am I going to say? Oh, it doesn't smell like anything? It smells gross, Timmy. And obviously, we'll be looking for you to jack off a little bit less than my son, who hopefully will find a flat this month. Well, I'd like to reassure you that I like to be the horny 16-year-old devil. As a 52-year-old man, I definitely feel like I've kind of gone over the hill with my sexual peak. Uh, and I do find that it's probably a once-a-week situation, and I will often do it uh, in a little bit of clean film to preserve it. But you don't need to know. I'll hide it under the bed. You, you can't be serious. This is a 52-year-old guy jacking off into cling film. Dad, you can't just kick me out. Timmy, uh, that's normal. Timmy, this I is... have to jack off. I'm 16. You don't have to, you monster. Now, listen up. This 52-year-old man is potentially your stepbrother. Now, be nice to him, okay? You've only just met him. I don't even know anything about this guy. Where am uh, I sleeping? I mean, you're right. You're right. Okay, I don't... I'm sorry, what was your name? Otto, was it? I don't mean to... Yeah, Otto. Otto, I don't mean to imply that you're definitely right. taking the room. Obviously, you're probably looking at other um, families to move into. Timmy, you will be moving out at the end of the month. It's not my concern, but I have uh, sent to your Gmail address, uh, Sweet Fortnite 29 a series of flatmates uh, that... Who are also looking for houses. So if you know, I'm trying to help you out, son, you've got to help me out because I'm trying to help you out. Otto, what do you even do? I work in mind the charity shop for mental health. It raises money, it raises my spirits. Then also a couple of days of work, I work in Clinton's cards, uh, uh, mostly in the the bereavement section. Uh, and they've not asked me to do that, but I've imposed that upon myself as a limitation. Occasionally, I make a foray into the engagement cards. Mostly, though, I'm near the sad cards. You never know who you're going to pick up when they're grieving. <laughs> Father, what did I do to deserve this? I've, I've always tried to be a nice kid. I've always tried to respect you. But... Uh, sorry, Greg. Uh, Greg, can I call you Dad? Is that all right? Yeah, oh, feel free what? to. In fact, I would all encourage right, it. But if you, if you feel... Like, we're not familiar enough yet. You know, we haven't signed any paperwork. Feel free to call me Greg. Cool. Uh, Greg slash dad. Uh, Timmy slash my new brothers really bring you down the vibe of this old room. I feel like I'm getting quite a depressive, sad, mm. pathetic. <laughs> oh, it's not the one. Timmy, we feel like me and your brother have been speaking, and we feel like you've got to get out of this room. <laughs> I do <don't. laughs> Philip, darling, I just wanted to say congratulations, Philip, on being such an overachiever academically. I mean, well done. You've gotten your Latin studies. You've got an A star plus plus. You've done so in English literature, physics double. You've done it in 
all of the subjects we didn't think you'd do any good in, but I must say, despite all of those achievements, I'm afraid that the fact that you can't even get a bit of tinfoil and rip it without ripping it apart is honestly the most ghastly, abhorrent, and absolutely unforgivable trait in a child. But I, I don't understand. It, it's, it's, it's not the biggest thing in the world. I, the amount of time I've studied, the amount of work I've put in, and that's the biggest criticism? I, uh, funding gone out the window because of some goddamn tinfoil? Philip, I never said I would take away your funding. I mean, we're an upper-class family. We reward mediocrity. But on a personal level, emotionally and mentally and spiritually, you've got to know that it is unacceptable for me as your mother and caregiver who chose to take a traditional role, even though I could have been a doctor. And you don't even respect the ability to rip some tinfoil cleanly. Oh, Philip. I, I can change. I, I, I can try again. Philip, I got Magda, who's worked with us for 18 long, arduous years, to try and train you. Dear darling Magda, from the Republic of Macedonia, and she's been there helping you, and still, after all of those hours of time, tutelage. You can't rip a bit of tinfoil, you poke holes in cling film, and oh, sandwich bags. I, I'm so sorry, madam, I tried to impart my knowledge onto him. His brain is so stupid. I know, Magda. Magda, listen, it's not your fault. <laughs> it's my fault. It's, it's my fault. No, Magda, I think in fact it's probably my ex fault. Something genetically in me created a child that was so academically gifted, but so incredibly stupid on a common sense level. <laughs> I, I've got nothing but eight stars my whole life. I, I'm gearing up for a PhD. We cut to, uh, we cut to Philip at his PhD Viva defence. So, Philip, um, you know, all of this is... Let me first of all say congratulations. Uh, me and the board have been impressed by the research you've been doing all these years. So feel like this is probably going to be a pass, but we do need to know that you can rip tinfoil. It's, you know, this is a certain class of person we want to be called doctor. And, uh, you know, this is just a formality. <laughs> Most people laugh when they hear this part, if I'm being honest. So there's your standard tinfoil. Feel free to cut us off a one metre slice. Is this really necessary... Now, your, your work in quantum physics, I'm sure uh, Dr. Wilkinson would agree with me, is some of the best we've had in the school. So, you know, do that rip and we can doff the cap on you, Doctor. Not yet. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I, come on, I've, I've put in a lot of research time into this. I, I've, I've written one of the best papers that the school... Uh, that I've done for the school. I, I feel that's enough. I'll just take the cap and leave, okay? <laughs> Listen here, Philip de Maurier. I've sat here in silence next to my esteemed colleague, but unless you can rip the strip, then you must not get a grip on this PhD. That is the saying we abide by. You rip the strip, and then we give you the tip of the dip, the hat being the dip. Yes. Is that the slogan of the school? Is that the slogan of this doctor? He doesn't know the slogan of the school. I, th I didn't know it was about t this. I, th I thought it was... Comedy. What did you think rip the strip and receive the tip from the dip meant, boy? I, I thought it was some old Latin. I didn't, I didn't think it... Well, not old Latin. I just thought it was just silly. I thought it was a joke. I didn't think it was an actual thing you guys oh, said. Oh, oh our, fo our forebearers and our forefathers... What a joke to you, were they? I bet you oh. with honey and mustard dip, you absolute ingrate. Oh. Are you saying you're too scared to rip tinfoil, boy? Because if you don't rip that tinfoil, oh. we'll rip your PhD in front of you. Five years of work gone down the blue. That's right, we'll flush it. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. 
Uh, he takes the tin foil and then he stretches it, but then there's like a little crease and then it it tears a little bit by the end. It's not a perfect square. It's just like a little bit damaged. Oh, oh no! We c- we can't do. We c- we c- Part two of the serial debate between Philip Maurier uh, on behalf of the Conservatives and Larry Leroy on behalf of Labour. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Fiona Bruce, uh, and here we have the two leaders of the parties to see who will be our new Prime Minister. Now, it's come to that portion in any debate that we know well, the time where policies have been taken over to the side, and where we must really find out whether the people that are going to be elected to lead our country are able to rip the strip. First up, it's Leroy, Leroy. Can you rip the strip? First of all, Fiona, let me just say it's an honour to rip for the country, and I look forward to doing it on a weekly basis for the country if your people and the people of the United Kingdom elect me. So, there we go. A simple task for a simple future. Wonderful, wonderful. I think we can agree that the immigration and the social equality policies really outstanding. But not only that, look at that clean strip rip. Wow, what a day. All right now, Philip de Maurier of the Conservatives, we've heard about your plans to put immigrants in underground sea tunnels, but what about your strip ripping? Let's um, have a look. I, I, have, I have some interesting statistics about the environment that I'd like to share with everybody today. Mm, that's great. We've got David Attenborough for that. Can we see the strip rip? Uh, uh, un- I, have, I have some interesting analysis on the unemployment levels. Uh, surely that would be a bit more interesting and serve my case. <laughs> hey, hey, we've all got Google. We don't need it. Give that strip a rip. Come on, the crowd are baying for it. No. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No. Good Lord, he isn't even slightly British enough to do this. Oh, my goodness, it's absolutely disgusting. Go, oh, please do not riot! This is a television studio, <laughs> not. <laughs> we cut to uh, Philip de Maurier, and uh, his wife is trapped under a car, but the car is made of tin foil. Donnie, please! No, I'm sorry! No, Use your I'm sorry. strength! No, not, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, you're done for. Hello, hello, hello! What sense does it make the matter here? That's just... Please, you lovable cockney! <laughs> Please! It's just, it's just a lovable cockney. You, know, you can't, can't do anything about it. You're British, Ow. you can rip this car apart! Don't worry about it. Look at these big old uh, man hands. Big old lovable cockney man hands. Fingers like bananas. Don't worry, <laughs> love. I'll get your bird out from under that strip. We, we cut to the unveiling of the new British Prime Minister and it's this lovable Cockney guy. Hello everyone, I've heard a word and I've instigated a 2pm cup of Rosie Lee. That's tea and you should put up your plates to me, that'll be your feet. And then after that, you're going to go up the upwards of pairs, through the stairs and have a little nap. We reckon Spain have done it right. Siestas for everyone. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Uh, so I've I've got a question. Um, I, I, I'm it's it's great that I, I love Science Club, but I, I just don't get how ice cubes turn to water when they're inside my bag. Uh, I'm sorry. Is is there a specific question? I mean, ice melts. You know, it's almost not even a science question. I, I know, but, it, you know, Science Club is about exploring everything, and I I know it sounds like a dumb question, and, oh, but okay, I, I okay, feel like okay. this is a safe space. Okay, I guess, I guess you want, like, a more sort of deep dive into the process. Um, 
So entropy is uh, a scientific phenomenon that is affected by heat. Now, uh, various matter states change based on what heat level, or what temperature. Um, so that's enough. I thank you, thank you. I, I feel like science club is just. You know, I can ask the dumb questions and not feel dumb. You know, you, you, you're going into detail about it, and it's just a nice change. It's a nice change from people just having a go at me. Oh. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, sir, um, I just wanted to say, I mean, thank you for being so kind and patient with uh, with Mongo, with, 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 with Mongo Jerry. Um, no, uh, no, 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 you know you can't say that right in front of his face. You can't say that right in front. We say that behind his back, okay? All right, sorry. Yeah. Um, 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 uh, what is your name again? I can't remember. What were it? Yeah, it's Jerry. It's, Ger it's Jerry. It's Jerry. It's Jerry. It's Jerry. Why do we cut? Oh, right, I get it. Listen, look. We learnt about states in year seven, sir. We learnt, uh, what? We're now in year ten, and I've come here to learn about quantum entanglement and quarks and, and, and we're talking about ice cubes there I know, I know this is a university level science class and he should know by this by now uh, but I can't just throw him out of the class, if I throw him out of the class what's going to happen, he's going to get into crime I can't be responsible for that okay, Jerry, you've got, I can see you've got your hand up again, thank you for putting yeah. your hand up this time, I'm not giving you a compliment, what's your question? Um, so uh, this is in a, uh, <clears throat> so if you if are you, you wetting yourself, boy? <laughs> You're yeah. seventeen years old. You can't be wetting what? yourself. Well, I was going to say that if if I wet myself, then does that mean that the trousers will just? I wouldn't need to like take care of my trousers if I'm in the hot sun because they'll dry up. How long will they dry up for? That's, I mean, that's just not true, okay? Uh, could you go to, uh, could you go to the toilet and change yourself? It smells a bit weird. Do you need I'm, help I'm with that? No, no, no. Is it okay if, if you sort of explain the process of, I don't know, water and heat, or in this case, wee-wee and heat drying up? It would make me feel a lot better. Okay, okay. Sorry, class. Sorry. To Debbie is, but yeah, I can't throw him out. Okay, so we have an interesting question here from Jerry, haven't we, class? Uh, which is about uh, how you know what? How, how do we draw a delineation between heat, like latent heat, being applied to uh, a body such as his trousers, and what the difference is between that and using a tumble dryer at home? Jerry, you know what the tumble dryer is now, right? Yeah, no, 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 that's, so that's enough, that's great, thank you for that. Thank okay, you. I've not explained the answer, but okay, yeah. yeah. So, so that goes back to states again, you're talking about evaporation, you're talking about uh, we're going from water to a gas. Uh, uh, Mungo Jerry, we only call you that because Mung is a bean and, and, and you've got no discernible shape. You're one of the highest testing students across every other subject other than science. You can tell me where every capital city is, what their name is, and the population. But mm -hmm. for some reason, you can't remember science. I'm just nervous. Science is one of those things that just makes me nervous. I, that's why I want to come to this class, because I, I have so many questions about the world and the universe, and I just don't... You know, if I get the stupid questions out first, that might help. Jerry, you've written five novels. Mm -hmm. They're best-sellers. <laughs> Oh my god! I, I know. know! I own all of them! But and none of them are about science, they're all nature. They are! The opposite of science. None of them are, are like odds to ornithology, absolute mm. love letters to birds. We cut mm. to um, uh, Jerry uh, at a, a book signing. Hey there, um, could you make out this one uh, to uh, Mark, uh, Mark Stansfield? Um, and also, if you could, like, put it on the desk when you're signing it. It's just I've noticed you've been signing it on your lap for a lot of people and you have quite clearly wet yourself, and that's... I just don't want my book to get ruined. Oh, uh, I'm a... I'm a little bit... 
nervous around tables because I don't know how the physics works. So if, if, if it's okay with you, I'm just going to sit here in my wee wee and write write your name. Oh, God. You know, I've got to say, and I wouldn't ordinarily bring this up, but you wrote one of the most powerful books I've ever read. You know, a, a postmodern treatise on the human system, how how society works together, how how without giving up individual liberty, society can work together to be bigger than the sum of parts. And I can't help but notice that you seem to have the operating capability of like a two-year-old, while still maintaining all of the higher function of one of the smartest people I've ever met. Could you just... I know I know, we were many asked questions during the readings, but like, could you just tell me an insight into your process? How are you so dumb but also smart? Do you, do you want me to write this in the book or that I'm signing for you? Yeah, I'm not going to say no to that. Okay. Uh, well, um, I guess I'm nervous around the sciences. I guess I, I, I've been so great with everything else, with poetry, with literature, and, and I guess it sort of levels things out. Um, actually, while you're here and while you're, you're taking such an interest in me, would it be possible if you could explain just one thing to me. I can try. I mean, I'm a postman. Uh, well, I I noticed that I noticed that you were wearing sunglasses uh, outside before you came in, and yeah. I just wanted to I just wanted to figure out how, like, how that works when looking at the sun, okay. and how your eyeballs don't melt. Does that make sense? We can't to Jerry's interview with David Attenborough on BBC One. Ah, uh, yes, Jerry. You wrote a beautiful book about owls. Nobody has ever seen the pony in quite the way you have. And as someone who is a proponent of natural sciences, it brings a tear to my eye. Thank you. It means a lot coming from someone as great as you. Oh, thank you so much. But, oh dear, Jerry, it seems that you have a stream of urine pouring down your leg. You know, even, even you saying that sentence sounds great. You can say anything and it sounds just delightful. Thank you, Jerry. But that's not true. I had to tell a friend that their uncle had died. Apparently, even my voice couldn't soften the blow of that. <laughs> no, not edit. I, I really need to see that. I'm sorry, I've got to see that. We cut to David Attenborough informing somebody that the rock was dead. Bring... No, not my uncle. Bring Please, bring no. Him. No. Please, no, not my uncle. I love my uncle so much. Listen, I'm very sorry, Samuel. I am not the Grim Reaper. I don't have control over the stands of time. I just happen to be at the roadside. But your uncle, whom I do not know, and you, whom I also have no former relationship with, as he was mown down by a car. Oh, no. Is this David Attenborough calling me? <laughs> no. Yes, it is. I just... I didn't know what else to do. A, a crowd gathered around. There was John Fashionu. There was Rhino from Gladiators. There was also Nicola Sturgeon. And we all said, wow, so many celebrities together at one time. Who should ring the family of this poor man, mincemeat on the street, and tell them that unfortunately he was dead? Apparently, if I did it, it would be soothing. Are you soothed? No!
Not you, Nicola Sturgeon! Sod you! He screamed no! Into my ear! <laughs> Listen, boy! Of what age are you? I'm 14, but it's still fine that I'm very close with my uncle. <laughs> I mean, that's absolutely fine. I was close with many of mine when we would look at the dung of animals and think, hmm, I wonder what did this shit. But listen, I'm sorry your uncle's dead. He's wearing a very nice suit. Perhaps you could ask the family if you might keep that after the funeral. Okay, I will. Thank you very much. Thanks for telling me. You're welcome. Uh, Thank you for having an uncle. Uh, For having had an uncle, sorry. Thank you for servicing the BBC for so long. (laughs) See Uh, bonjour, uh, my name is uh, Marguerite. Uh, hello, BBC. It's lovely to be on a date with you. Yeah, no, it's I, it's it's really nice to finally meet you. Well, uh, we've been uh, connecting with each other on various forums for many years, and I just wanted to finally go on a date with a BBC, British Broadcasting Company. I just love the accent. <laughs> That's perfectly fine. It's very nice to be having Chanel number number one on a date with. We we're big in our own countries. It's sort of inevitable. Well, listen. I am Chanel number one, the original. Chanel number five. Everybody knows about her, but I am the one. Uh, I just wanted to say to you that I'm sorry that your uh, your long term relationship. But David Attenborough has gone astray, but uh, I'm so glad I get to look in. Oh, it's... Everybody's been asking the same thing, but, um... Uh, hey, we've got some... We've got some good faces. Uh, you better let go a lot, though. Uh, Attenborough was a good chap. But, hey, you... I've heard... Sorry, I didn't interrupt. I'm just, uh, excited no, I mean, we, we don't have to talk about David. We don't have to. I, I've got loads of... I've got Graham Norton now. He's great. Uh, uh, I've got uh, Jules Holland doing quite well. We, we don't need David, you know? We need him. <laughs> hey there, guys. Uh, did you enjoy oh, your no, meal? No, did you enjoy your meal? I, I heard that you did. Oh, sorry, say that again. Oh, you know, one. You enjoy your meal? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and... uh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just. I'm quite socially nervous. I'm BBC and Chanel One at my table at this restaurant. You know, I'm a little bit intimidated. Yes, yes. Uh, everything's going fine at the table. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe another bottle of champagne would probably be nice. You see, that would be lovely. And can we have another baguette, please? Uh, the Angus Steakhouse is most delicious, but I love the bread. <laughs> mm. Of course, one bottle of champagne and one baguette. <laughs> um, BBC, I just want to bring this up. I think maybe this is a little bit awkward, but I heard that uh, David is uh, is seeing Instagram. No, that's... Really? I didn't know. I didn't know. I... It's not like I've been checking up on David Attenborough. <laughs> He's... You know, we've gone our separate ways now, and... Uh, how's how is he? How is he doing on the Instagrams? Treating him okay? Oh, we oui, we oui, mon cœur. He's absolutely uh, broken into the ways that has not been done since the bottom of the champagne. Uh, I just wanted to say to you that he is very well. He is extremely well. Me and the other brand have been talking, and we said, "Oh, we're going to call him Daddy." <laughs> it's like Daddy, but with a D. <laughs> Did David tell you to come and see me? Uh, there is your uh, baguette and there is your bottle of champagne. Of course, both are wrapped in tin foil for freshness. I'll let you guys unwrap them. We've been once, Missy, Missy. 
so go ahead, you BBC. I would let you have the honesty. <laughs> so, yes. You know, you, you know, I've been around for a long time. Is this really necessary? Are you the waiter? You can do it. You, you're being paid to do it, right? You can. You I'm actually, to, uh, actually, my contract specifically prohibits me from doing it for one of the customers. And I will not be leaving the table until I see it unwrapped. Yes, I find it uh, extremely capable and uh, and manly. If I see somebody rip the strip, you know what they say. <laughs> it's international. Well, uh, yeah, we, we, we wouldn't want to fuck that thing up. <laughs> um, is 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 there a is there a, sorry is there a bathroom? Where's the nearest bathroom? Because I'm oh we don't have any bathrooms. Okay, good because I've just been pissing myself for the last two seconds. Okay, okay, well. Oh, it's you. Yes. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Uh, but it's 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 far. Um, David would know what to do in this situation, but uh, he's not with me anymore. And uh, she he would know what to do. I mean, we all know about the historical incident when there was that uh, future prime minister, and he could not repair the script. They beat him to death in a television studio. He he what? Sorry. They beat him to death yeah. in a television studio. Maybe that number was covered in a viscera. He was there. He helped. He oh. did. Uh, with a microphone, with the boom mic, he shoved it in his eyes. Sir, I've got other tables I to go to. Could you just try and wrap this and like we can get on with our lives? Okay. Uh, fine. Fine. Okay, fine. I'll do it. Uh, he rips it, but he, he rips like a tiny little bit off accidentally, um, and uh, it's just all skewed up. There. Quel oh. horror! Oh. Secret burn in your arm! <laughs> That's our show! <laughs> <laughs> that was very fun. <laughs> um, Francesca, do you have anything you want to plug? Um, if you are in London, we are doing some real life shows. Uh, I'm doing Hell Yeah on the 17th. It's the Queer Women's Improv Collective. Um, and on the, I think, 6th of November, if you go to Hell Yeah on Instagram. But you can follow me at Francesca Renee 3 on Instagram and Twitter. Not in real life because I'll get a restraining order. Um, uh, and on Facebook, it's Francesca Renee Reeves Actor. So I've got a fancy middle name, whatever. Mm. <laughs> mm. Uh, McKinnis, anything to plug? Me? Um, the very same. Yeah, I'll plug the same. I'll plug the same. Um, <laughs> the same as Francesca? Yeah, yeah I'll plug Francesca's stuff. Uh, no, I guess. Um, I do another show. Uh, I do a show with an improv, improv team called Couch on Tuesdays. Couch Improv on Facebook, you can find that. Uh, and my Twitter, I guess. Liebot, L-Y-E-Bot. That's where I post stuff. What about you, Galka? Would you like to have the final say, plug stuff, and then be done? I'd be honoured. Uh, so uh, I'm in an improv team called Boat Club. We do uh, shows online every Sunday on YouTube. YouTube and we're also on Spotify and also this video is on the Bristol Long Form Comedy YouTube channel look at the other guests that we've had check out the same, watch this video again Francesca, who's mm-hmm. awesome um, and everything everything is up here that you need uh, and with that, we want to say a big thank you to Francesca again, thank you so much for being on the show Thank you so much for having me I also forgot, sorry, tomorrow at 8pm premiere of Danny Boy the LGBTQIA film I was in uh, on YouTube, on Loud Boys, Loud Boy, Loud Films, Loud Films on YouTube. And thanks so much for having me. It really means the world that I can connect with you there in Bristol. You're absolute legends. I've had a blast. Yeah. And with awesome. that, thank you very much, everybody. We shall see you next week. Yay. Bye. Bye.